सुस्वागतम 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 सभी का स्वागत है शाम तक चैनल में और आज हमारे साथ है मशहूर साइंटिस्ट और डॉक्टर डॉक्टर बर्मन आज हम डॉक्टर बर्मन से पूछने वाले हैं कि क्या उनके ख्याल है आज की भारत की हाइजीन स्थिति पे देखिए हाइजीन स्थिति जो है वो बिल्कुल बर्बाद हो चुकी है इंडिया की क्योंकि पानी की बहुत कमी लोग हाथ धो नहीं पाते उसके लिए मैंने एक नया आविष्कार किया है इसको मैं कहता हूँ नेचुरल सैनिटाइजर हमने भी बनाया जी हमने भी बनाया अरे अरे ये मेरा मेरा पे, पे, इंटरव्यू है पे, पेड़ है ये तो पे, पेड़ तो हमने भी लगाया जी पे, पे, हाँ, हाँ, देखो हाँ, इसको अनलॉक विलॉक करके पेड़ लगा दिया निकालो इसको निकालो यहाँ से निकालो निकालो जरा दर्शकों से मैं माफी चाहूंगा इस टेक्निकल डिफिकल्टी के लिए बट एनी वे डॉक्टर बर्मन आप अपना नया प्रोडक्ट दिखाइए प्लीज जी जी तो so, देखो मैंने बहुत सुना है कि आजकल की जो यंग युवा है इंडिया में उनको बालों की समस्या बहुत हो रही है बहुत जल्दी बाल झड़ने लग गए तो मैंने एक नेचुरल बढ़िया से शैम देखिए बात हो बालों की और बात हमसे ना की जाए वापस तो ऐसा हो नहीं सकता गतंजलि आपके लिए लाया एकदम सेम टू सेम प्रोडक्ट अरे यार पर वो अच्छा है ना ये बढ़िया है ये सेम टू सेम और दस रूपए सस्ता है लास्ट ईयर अ कंपनी विद हम्बल ओरिजिन इन आयुर्वेदा रीच अ वैल्यूएशन ऑफ वन लाख क्रोर The story traces back to the late 19th century when India was tormented by deadly diseases like cholera, malaria and dengue. During this time in 1884, a doctor named S K Burman living in a small town in West Bengal started crafting natural ayurvedic formulations in his house. He bicycled from home to home providing his remedies in poor rural areas. This man had a simple motive He wanted to provide effective medicines to poor people in remote villages at an affordable cost and with this simple motive he wrote history. As the word of Dr. Burman's effective ayurvedic formulation spread across the villages so did the demand. In 1896 the da of Dr. and bur of Burman from his name merged and the legendary brand Dabur was born. You know Patanjali's playbook has been played hundreds of years before and it was by Dabur the OG Ayurveda brand. Dabur's growth story began in the early 20th century when Dr. Burman's son CL Burman expanded the company's operations beyond Kolkata. With the goal to bring Ayurveda to every corner of India, he set up new manufacturing units, research and development centers and distribution networks that helped them reach a larger customer base. The Bowman family faced some labor unrest in Kolkata while scaling their operations due to which the full family and Dabur's headquarters were moved to Delhi. Kolkata's loss was Delhi's gain. In 1940, the company made a big decision to foray into the personal care market and introduce a range of personal care products such as Dabur Amla hair oil, Vatika and Hajmola which all became instant hits. These products built on ayurvedic principles offered a unique and effective alternative to its chemical first products. Here's a lesson on fact about Dabur. In 1993, Dabur also entered the specialized healthcare of cancer treatment with its oncology formulation plant. In 2003, Dabur's pharma business was separated from Dabur's FMCG business and now runs as a separate independent entity. Dabur Pharma has developed some breakthrough technologies for cancer treatment. As Dabur's growth strategy continued to evolve, in 1990s it sought to explore opportunities beyond India's borders. See, the company knew how to sell health supplements, hair oil. and tooth powder but now they had diversified into underrated areas they were making chewing gum with spanish company snack foods with an israeli company and cheese with a french partner this was a totally different ball game altogether so they brought the consulting firm mckinsey on board to help them out with the expansion the very first question that mckinsey asked the management was just because your last name is burman does that make you the most qualified to run this business This put Dabur family in a conundrum and got them thinking. See there's a saying that goes hard times create strong men, strong men create good times and good times create weak men. And the fourth generation of the Dabur family which was now running the business was born with a silver spoon. They knew they did not have what it takes to run the organization. Recognizing this, they made a ground breaking decision. professional experienced managers would now run dabur and no burman family member would draw salary from the company but the members would collect their dividends and could build ventures outside of dabur at that time they had eight members across the fourth and fifth generations working at dabur and they all quit their executive positions almost overnight here's a very important lesson here 
if you want to create a lasting institution and if you want to create wealth you must have the right people in the right place in your company see a company's products and services may keep evolving but it's your team and management that makes or breaks the organization we at tv have also always realized this and made it a priority to find people who are best at their craft there's no ego involved here we want to be able to learn from other people's strengths and that's the culture that we've been fostering here from the very beginning you should always remember that your organization is only as strong as your weakest member Dabur to this day by the way is reaping the benefits of the decision they took back in the 90s. Do you know how much money the international division of Dabur makes right now? 2800 crores as of last year. That is 30% of their consolidated revenue. They were able to expand to over 120 countries across the globe and some of their brands are number 1 in countries like Saudi, UAE and Egypt. By the turn of the 21st century, Dabur had become a major player in the Indian FMCG sector with revenues crossing 1000 crores in 2001 and last year they did 10800 crores overall. Dabur's biggest mode though is Dabur's distribution network. The company has a wide distribution network covering 6 million retail outlets with a high penetration in both urban and rural markets. The rural outreach expands to about 90,000 villages. See, Dabur recognized much ahead of its competition that rural India would become a key growth driver and leverage that very early on. During the last decade, Dabur, like any business, faced some setbacks when companies like Patanjali entered the market and threatened their market share. They realized that Patanjali is playing for the price race to the bottom. It's a game where no one makes money in the long run. So instead of competing for lowest pricing there, they focused on their moat, which was their distribution. They launched an aggressive strategy to penetrate the rural markets even further. They realized that Patanjali's attack at them and Patanjali's positioning came disguised as an opportunity. See, Patanjali was screaming Ayurveda at the top of his voice and acting like the harbingers of Sudeshi brand. Dabur used this to their benefit and launched an Ayurvedic outreach program where they set up 600 plus rural health camps, got up to 40,000 doctors on board through whom they treated patients and built awareness around Dabur's Ayurvedic offerings. They also hired rural sales promoters to deepen its rural push. This worked very well. And to further capitalize on the wide spaces created by Patanjali, Dabur adopted what's called a flanking strategy. It's basically when you attack the enemy from the side or flank of the enemy instead of engaging in a head-to-head -head battle. See, Dabur realized that rural India wanted Ayurveda, they wanted Swadeshi brands and wanted them at lower cost. So, they launched something called flanker brands. That's essentially product extensions or sub-brands that targeted these specific market segments and consumer needs that were not being fully addressed by their main brands for example one of the products they launched was dabur badam amla hair oil which would serve as a satellite to the main brand dabur amla oil now through this flanking attack three things happened First was Dabur captured a new white space which helped Dabur grow its market share further. Secondly, it did this without cannibalizing the sales of Dabur Amla hair oil and while protecting the core brand identity of Dabur Amla. And thirdly, this new flanker brand would also ring fence their current blockbuster products from future intrusions, basically protecting Dabur Amla from direct competition from Patanjali. They basically beat Patanjali at its own game. Now there's another law here that plays a big role behind all Dabur's decision. It's called the power law. So recently I was talking to a VC who was telling me that for every single business there're going to be one or two decisions or one or two products that are going to bring disproportionately large returns. Hey, what's up bro? Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yeah, so how are you feeling, Priya? I'm feeling absolutely fantastic. But tell me how are you so rich? See, I'm a business guy. I run a lot of businesses. And according to power law only two businesses out of 10 businesses make you money so i have a lot of businesses a space research center i have a ai tech company i have a car manufacturing company and i have a chain of restaurants but tell me what's the most profitable business aapne ye suna hi hoga pappu maar na khala laal tange le And this very same law holds valid for Dabur here as well. 70% of Dabur's revenue comes from its nine power brands listed here. 
From these nine brands, there were four brands which crossed 1000 crores in revenue last year. See, Davos strategy is to do whatever it takes to defend these nine power brands while experimenting with new adjacent products to improve their visibility and enhance their distribution. This strategy has also helped them stay agile and respond to market trends much faster. For example, post pandemic, they saw a huge resurgence in demand for traditional ingredients and recipes that could improve immunity and overall health. Lots of brands like Kapiva, Mamarth capitalized on this opportunity and seeing this, Dabur also entered multiple categories and launched multiple products, growing their salience with millennials and Gen Z as well. See, they may not dominate these segments immediately, but that's fine because they have their nine cash cows sorted. So this lets them do some experimentation on the side. Every new market category it enters like wellness, dairy, diapers, staple food opens up new growth opportunities for Dabur. Whatever will eventually work, Dabur will double down on that and make it into a power brand. From what I can see, India's resurgence of love for Ayurveda and natural products seems to have just begun and I think Dabur's story is also just getting started. Yes, same to same on 10 rupees. Sasta hai. Munna, hut. Beta tu bet. Bet. Bet, bet, bet. Aakhir kaar swadeshi products ko mil gai hai. Tu copy karega? Mai tujhe bata ta hu. Hey, chodu. Dikchik, dikchik laga rai. Oh, Ayurveda. चोरी चोरी करके आइडिया स्कैम तूने किया सालों की मेहनत हम है करते हमारी ही 